Hello and welcome to this getting started with Microsoft Teams and Office 365 Groups Administration course. My name is Wakat Vinesco and I will be your instructor for this course. In this module, we will cover the basics of Office 365 Groups Administration. We will first start by covering the basic Office 365 Group operations such as creating a group, deleting a group, or even restoring a group. Next up, we will learn how to manage Office 365 group membership and we will introduce concepts such as dynamic membership and access reviews. Lastly, we will look at what Office 365 group settings we can change and how we can change them. The goal of this module is really to cover everything we can configure as an Office 365 group owner and understand the impact of doing those changes as a group owner before we go into the admin centers and then do those settings at scale using PowerShell and things like that. But first, it's really important to understand what each setting does and what is the impact on Office 365 group. Let's start with the basic Office 365 group operations. First of all, creation. Office 365 groups can be created from many locations, as we have seen in the architecture model of this course. And wherever you create them from, they all have the same settings at the end, with the exception of Office 365 connected Yammer communities, of course. The only difference from the same point of view, creation is that creating from certain locations might give you more or less initial options, but you can always configure the same settings if you go to the group properties afterwards. It's just that that initial creation wizard is a bit different. Now, who can create Office 365 groups? Well, any Office 365 user can create an Office 365 group by default. So unless you close it down, the answer is really everybody. You can, however, limit group creation to only allowed individuals, but we won't go into that in this course as it will be covered more in detail in another tool site course called Configuring Governance and Compliance for Microsoft Teams and Office 365 Groups. Now let's start looking at an example of creating a group from Outlook. Some of the properties we need to provide are, first of all, the display name of the group, which is what users will see. We then have the email address of the group mailbox, which is automatically generated based on the display name, but it can be manually changed if you want to. We then have the group description, which is optional, but of course highly recommended. And next up we have the privacy settings, which gives us two options, public or private. For public groups, basically everybody in the organization can join them and see what's inside. And for private groups, only approved members of the group can see their comments. Next up, we have the option to select if you want to send copies of the conversation to group member inboxes. When you turn the setting on, group members will get a copy of the group emails and meeting invitations sent to their Outlook inbox. They can read and delete this copy of the email and not affect anybody else in the group. In the group inbox, a copy of that email still exists. It's really if you just want them to also get a copy in their individual inboxes. The last one is the language and it's simply selecting the language that the group related notifications will be sent in. Lastly, we can add both members and guests to the group so we can start collaborating right away. You cannot add other users directly as owners from here, simply members and guests. Now let's take a look at another example where we created from Sherman in the Chopin group creation process, most of the settings are the same, so we have the site name, the group email address, site description, which will be the group description, privacy settings, and language. However, as you can see in the screenshot at the bottom right, I can add owners directly to the group as 
part of the creation process, but I'm not able to set email subscription preferences. When I this one of those options, there is really no membership options in the creation wizard, no subscription options either. All of those have to be changed after group creation. So again, depending on where you create it from, you're going to get different options at creation. But in the end, it's still an Office 365 group, so you can always modify it and you have always access to the same options afterwards. Depending on previous configurations by your administrators, you might see other options in there such as classifications, sensitivity labels, group usage guidelines, and so on. Those will be covered again in the configuring governance and compliance for Teams and Office 365 groups course. But for now, we'll just stick to only out of the box basics. Now that we have seen the theory, let's go to the lab to see how we can create an Office 365 group from Outlook from SharePoint as well as from Planner. We are now in the lab environment, so let me open up the browser over here where I have simply logged in my Office 365 account and I'm in the office home at office.com. So let's start with Outlook. I will open up Outlook over here and if I scroll down here on the left sidebar to the bottom, I have the groups category which by default it was minimized, but might be maximized for you. It really keeps your user preferences. And then we will click on new group. I will have the pop up that open, so let's create our global mantics internet refresh. As you see, it automatically generates the email address for me, depending on the name. What it basically does, it just scripts off the spaces and special characters from the email. And also checks for the so if you have one that would have the same email address, it would add a number on there. But I can go in and I can add a one, two, three if I wanted to. But I'm not gonna do that, I might avoid that. Then I'll add a description, so let me add Office 365 group to collaborate on the new internet. There we go. And then I have the privacy, which can either be public or private. So public Anyone in your organization can see what's inside, or as private, only a group member can see what's inside. So let me pick private, then I have the option if members will receive all group conversation and events in their inboxes. By default, it's on, but let me get this off for this group. Then let me open up more settings, and then I have the language for the group related notifications, or I can pick any of the really hundreds of languages that Office 365 supports, but I will keep it at English United States. Now let me click on Create. While it's creating, it will actually already invite me to add members. So let me add just John Smith over here for now, and let me add Drew. Let's add Drew as well. Great. And as you can see, there are members. I cannot promote them to owners yet. So I can really add members only as part of the creation interface. And if I wanted, I can also add guests. If I want to add, let's say, black at Nesco at hotmail.com. And if my organization allows it, of course, then we're going to look at all of those settings in this course. But if your organization allows it, you can also add guests. So now let me click on add. And everything is now ready to go and we're ready to use our group. Now let's take a look at creating a group from other applications and let's take a look at SharePoint. So now my SharePoint phone, which is really the home of SharePoint when you click on a SharePoint app, and I'll click on create site. And I have the choice between a team site, which is connected to an Office 365 group, or a communication site, and I will choose team site. And let me type in global analytics. A system refresh here, which will be our next group. It will verify everything, but as you can see, we actually have a little warning here in orange that it says this site address is available with the modifications. That is because there might already be a site 
at global nav gets consistent refresh. So it actually added a two right there at the end. What we can do in this case, because probably users are not going to like the two, so what we can do is we can actually edit the alias to make it a bit different, and then that will automatically regenerate the URL. So let's see if we can do a quick change here. Let me do change email address. And let's just add a system over here an S. And now it actually was able to do it. So Global Mapix takes systems refresh as an alias and as a site address work. I can then add the site description if I want to. Privacy settings are the same, so either public or private. And then the language of the SharePoint site. Really important that the language of the SharePoint site cannot be changed. So once you create that site in English, it will always be in English. But you could, however, add more languages afterwards if you want to. Then I will click on next. And as you can see, I have my Office 365 group that got created. And now I can add additional owners or members. So let me add Jeff Collins over here as an owner. And I will add Vanessa Lee as a member here. Click on finish. It will take a few more seconds and then it's going to bring me to the SharePoint site part of the Office 365 group. So this is for SharePoint as you see. Pretty similar options but we can actually configure the ownership directly on the creation process but we don't have any of the email settings that we had with Outlook such as group subscriptions notification language and so on. Now let me go back to the office phone and let's take a look at our last one which is Planner. So I will click on Planner over here. At the top left I will go and click on New Plan and let's call this one Marketing Systems Refresh. I have the choice if it's public or private. Let's make it private. And then in the options, I only have the group description. I'm not going to put it for this demo. I'm just going to click on create plan. And this is it. Create a document group to create this plan. But I don't actually have any members yet. So there's no membership part of the creation process. I have to manually go in and add members after the group was created. This is it for this demo in which we have simply looked at how to create an Office 365 group from the user interface and at the different options we have depending on where we create it from. Creating Office 365 groups doesn't have to be done from scratch. Sometimes you can upgrade existing resources to Office 365 groups, such as a standalone SharePoint site. The process is unofficially called Groupify in the SharePoint community. Groupify allows you to create an Office 365 group around an existing SharePoint site, keeping that site intact so you don't need to migrate any of the data. There are some restrictions, as the SharePoint site must be a team site, so either a classic team site, or for those of you that are a lot more into SharePoint, the SPS0 template, or a modern standalone team site, or the SPS3 template. Something important to know is that the original SharePoint permissions remain in SharePoint only, so those do not get transferred to Office 365 group permissions, you need to take care of it separately, either manually or programmatically. To connect an existing site to a new Office 365 group, from the Site Settings menu, you will see the Connect to New Office 365 Group option if you are a Site Collection Administrator, and if your Tenant Administrator did not disable it. This will really only show on sites on which Groupify would work on, so again, the two team site templates that I have shared earlier. You can also use PowerShell to bulk Groupify SharePoint sites. Microsoft provides several PowerShell command lines and scripts to do it, but you need to be a SharePoint online admin and have the TMP PowerShell module 
and the instructions are in the links in the slides. If you do not know what the TNC PowerShell module is, make sure you check out the Configuring and Editing SharePoint Online course on Google's site as it covers all of the tools you need to manage SharePoint. Something else to remember is that a lot of the scripts provided by Microsoft under the TNP repository are open source and there is no SLA or support from official Microsoft support channels for them. There is community support for GitHub issues and things like that and the initiative is really backed by Microsoft so it's something that you'll be able to get help on just not through the official Microsoft support channels. Another type of artifact that we can upgrade to an Office 365 group are distribution lists. You can upgrade distribution lists to Office 365 groups to give users additional collaboration capabilities. In order to upgrade distribution lists to Office 365 groups, you need to be an Exchange Online Admin or a Global Admin, and you can do it in the Exchange Online Admin Center or in PowerShell. This is really an admin level action, not something you can do if you're not a service admin. The upgrade process can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours, and it's important to know, kind of like SharePoint, not all of the distribution lists are eligible. You can only upgrade cloud managed, simple, non nested distribution lists. Learn a little bit more in detail. Some example distribution lists that are not eligible for upgrades are distribution managed distribution lists, nested distribution lists, distribution lists that have more than 100 owners, distribution lists that only have members but no owner, and there are quite a few more restrictions, so I have added a link there to Microsoft Docs where all of the restrictions are shown. And I know that I said we'll not go into too much Admin Center or PowerShell in this course, but in this case it's really relevant, so I'll cover it briefly. You can easily get all of the eligible distribution lists to the Exchange Online PowerShell commandlet, get eligible distribution group for migration. You can also use PowerShell to upgrade them by using the upgrade distribution group PowerShell commandlet, and you can either upgrade one distribution group at a time, multiple distribution lists or groups at the same time, or if you want with a single PowerShell commandlet, you can upgrade all of the eligible ones inside your tenant. Now that we have stock creation, let's also talk about Office 365 group deletion because you do not have to keep Office 365 groups forever. Group owners as well as administrators can delete Office 365 groups and deleting an Office 365 group will delete almost all of the content in that group, so files, chats, emails, and so on. After deletion, you only have 30 days to restore the Office 365 group before it's gone forever. There is one exception to the group delete rule and that's why I said almost all of the content in that group, which is videos in Microsoft Stream. Videos in Stream do not get deleted with the Office 365 group, they simply become unlinked to it and remain only linked to the person that uploaded them, but they still count towards your stream storage limit. You can delete Office 365 groups from Outlook from the Edit Group thing, where you will get a warning that everything will be deleted, and then you can simply check the box and click on Delete. You can delete Office 365 groups from basically any service part of that group, and some of them are a bit more detailed on the wordings, some of them have a bit less, but remember that all of the content except stream videos gets deleted with the group. When groups are deleted, they actually go into a soft deleted state for 30 days, 
where they can still be restored by either group owners or Office 365 administrators. As a group owner, through the client interface, let's say, the only place you can restore them from is Outlook. From an admin point of view, you have a bunch of different locations where you can restore them from, but as a group owner, it can only be done through Outlook. From Outlook, under the Manage Groups, you will see a Deleted Groups category. And as we can see, all of the soft deleted groups and restore them. When you go in a group, you will see details on when it got deleted and until when you have to restore it. You simply click on the restore button and that's it. However, it can take up to 24 hours, depending on the amount of content, for the group to be fully restored. Now that we have seen the theory, let's go in the lab and see how we can delete an Office 365 group and then how to restore a deleted Office 365 group. We are now in the lab environment and let me open up the browser over here and I will go to Outlook and let's scroll down to the group category here. Let's take the global mantis implement refresh and in order to delete it, we go into settings and then we need to go into edit group and at the bottom we will have the delete group button. So let me go and delete group over here. It will give me a warning that you're about to delete the group Globalmatic Synchronet Refresh. Make sure you back up all of your files and if you continue everything will be deleted including conversations, files in SharePoint, the group notebook and planner tasks. I will say that I understand and then we will click on delete and that's it, the group got deleted. Great, now if we want to restore this, I simply go into the manage groups over here at the bottom and after that, I always by mistake, I see the first deleted over here folder but that is for contacts. We actually need to scroll down and then under the groups category, we need to go to the deleted page and you can see I have the global mantics internet refresh that got deleted today. I have some information such as this group was deleted on 24th of February 2020. You have until March 25th to restore all of the group's conversations, files, notebooks and calendar events. Now for recording, I'm in a super small resolution. Let me zoom out of it and now we can see the restore button that was hiding on the right side. So let me click this restore button. Again, depending on how much content there is, it might be almost instant. Like it was for this group since it was basically kind of empty. But if you have a ton of content, it will take up to 24 hours for all of the content, Teams conversation, SharePoint files to actually restore. This is it for this demo in which we have seen how to delete an Office 365 group as well as how to restore it from a non-admin interface directly in Outlook Web Access. Now let's go back in the lab and see how we can manage Office 365 group membership. Next up, let's talk about Office 365 group membership. There are two types of possible roles in Office 365 groups. You have owners, members, and guests. Group owners can add or remove members and have unique permissions like the ability to delete conversations, turn the shared box, or change most of the settings about the group. Group owners can also rename the group, update the description or picture, and more. Members can access everything in the group, but they cannot change group settings. And finally, group guests are members, but they are from outside of your organization. You can add users to a group from any service that's part of the Office 365 group, with some small exceptions which are you cannot currently add guests from Microsoft Screen and Power BI simply redirects you to Outlook. You can view 
all of the members in the Office 365 group from most applications. In this example, I'm showing it in Outlook on the web. To add members, you simply click the Add Members button and users are always added as members first. Then you can quickly promote them to owners from that same interface by simply using the drop down where it says member and then you can either choose between member and owner and you can also delete members from that same interface by simply clicking the X button. And the experience is very similar in other services. You can see here in Stream, uh, we have a SharePoint here. Teams is also very, very similar. But there is of course another exception to remember for Office 365 group membership, which is SharePoint. SharePoint is the only service in groups that can have additional users added only to that service whereas all of the other services in groups rely on the group membership. When you add people to SharePoint, as you can see in the screenshot on the left, you can add them only to the SharePoint site and not necessarily to the group, so it can also people added to the site. Now that we have covered the basics, there are actually two types of Office 365 group membership management. The first one, which we have seen so far, is called Assigned Membership. And this is where members are managed manually by group owners, kind of like we've been doing so far. The second one is called Dynamic Membership, and this is when members are added and removed automatically based on dynamic rules. Group owners cannot manually add or remove members from the group, and it's really based on those rules that create users cannot even leave groups if they want to. Dynamic membership groups do have some extra requirements. First of all, they can only be created by administrators from the Azure Active Directory portal, so this really are groups that cannot be created by a user, only by an administrator. Dynamic membership groups also require special licensing. This feature requires an Azure AD Premium 1 license for each unique user that is a member of one or more dynamic group. You don't have to assign a license to users for them to be members of a dynamic group, but you must have the minimum number of licenses independent to cover all such users. For example, if you had a total of a thousand unique users in all dynamic groups in your tenant, you would need at least 1,000 licenses for Azure AD Premium 1 to meet the license requirement. To build those rules, you have a nice user interface based option in Azure Active Directory in which you can simply add rules and it's very straightforward to use. Something to remember, however, is that it might take some time for the rule to take effect as it's not processed right away, so after creation, give it a few hours before you start seeing results. Now that we have seen the theory, let's go to the lab and see how we can manage Office 365 group membership for assigned groups, as well as how to create an Office 365 group with dynamic membership. We are now in the lab environment, so let me open up the browser, and first of all, let's take a look at the assigned membership groups. So I will go in the Globomantics Infinite Refresh group that we've played a bit with earlier, and in order to add members, I will simply click on the three members here, so let me click on it, and it will bring me to the members view. If I want to add members, I can simply click on the Add Members button and then let me start typing Vanessa Lee. Let's add Vanessa to this group, select it. I will click on Add, which will only take a few seconds. I will close this and then let's say I wanted to promote Vanessa to a group owner. Under the Member drop down over here, I can choose between Member and Owner. Let's say I will just make Drew an owner as well. And if I want to demote users, it's the same thing. If they are an owner, I can bring them back to only being a member of the group. And if 
I want to delete a certain user, I can simply just click the X button and I will get a warning. Are you sure you want to remove Drew from the group? Yes. And that is it. We have removed the member. If we go inside of SharePoint, on the SharePoint site of that Office 365 group, let's take a look at that SharePoint exception. So I will go into site settings here, I will go into site permissions, which will show me all of the different SharePoint groups in that site. Now when I click on invite people, this is where it will ask me, do you want to add members to the group or only to the SharePoint site? If I click on add members to the group, I will see the exact same settings as in Outlook before, so same membership, same everything. Now, let's take a look at dynamic membership groups, and I went into the Azure Active Directory portal or admin center, and let's click on new group here, so new group, first thing first, group type, I will choose Office 365, and I will call it Research Collaboration. It will automatically generate the email address, which I can go and change if I want, group description, so same thing as before, and then by default you see the membership type is it assigned, and by default you can see the membership type is assigned, and I have the option to add owners and members. But let me switch that to dynamic membership, and as you can see the adding members has gone away, instead I can pick up owners and then add the dynamic query. So let me first of all go in owners, I will add Alex West and then let me also add Vlad Katrinescu select, so I add the two owners and now let's go add the dynamic query. Adding the dynamic query from the admin center is pretty easy, let's say what I do is I'll search for department, so I'll say where department, let's do equals and then the value is research. I can also add more things, so for example I can say or department equals R&D or something else and then I can say and cut equals Canada if I want them to be absolutely in Canada. So I really have an easy to use UI for my rules here, but if you know what you're doing or you want to build something complex, you maybe collaborated with somebody from external, you can always click on edit here and actually edit the rule syntax directly. So instead of using the UI builder, you can directly type it in as text. There we go, it finally loaded, and then I can go in and let's say I can add different things there. I'm not gonna mess with it, I'm just gonna click on discard everything, then let's click on save of the dynamic membership rule, and then let's click on create. The membership will not process right away, so let's see, you see if I click on it, I can see the creation date, however, if I look in the membership processing status and last updated, right now they are blank because they did not get processed. It might take a few hours until it actually finishes processing, so don't worry if you do not see any members just yet. This is it for this module. In this module, we have seen how to manage membership for Office 365 groups, so how to add members, remove members, promote them to an owner, or demote them to a member, as well as took a look at the SharePoint exception, where we have seen how in SharePoint you have the option that you can add people to only a SharePoint site. Lastly, we have went into the Azure Active Directory Admin Center, and we have created a dynamic membership group with all of the users in the research department. Now let's go back to the slides and learn how to manage access reviews inside Office 365 groups. We know now how to manage group membership, but we also know that most of the time, group owners are not proactive in reviewing group membership and this is where the feature called Access Reviews comes in. Azure Active Directory Access Reviews enable organizations to efficiently manage group membership 
have two special price applications and roam assignments. Users access can be reviewed on a regular basis to make sure that only the right people have continued access. Access reviews allow you to proactively engage Office 365 group owners to verify the membership of their groups either only for guests or for all members and you can configure it to run only once or on a schedule such as weekly, monthly, quarterly, and so on. From a requirements point of view, this feature requires higher level licenses than dynamic membership as this requires Azure Active Directory Premium 2 licenses. You have to ensure that your directory has at least as many Azure AD Premium 2 licenses as you have employees that will be performing the following tasks. Member and guest users who are assigned as reviewers, member and guest users who perform a self-review, group owners who perform an access review, application owners who perform an access review, but no licenses are required for users with the global admin or user administrator roles that set up access reviews, configure settings, or apply the decisions from the reviews. Azure Active Directory reviews are created well in the Azure Active Directory portal and they are pretty easy to create. You first need to specify the name, description, start date, and frequency and you have a drop down for all of the possible choices for the frequency. You can also specify an end date and duration of the review and select what type of access should be reviewed, guest only or guest and members. You can also select the applicable groups this access review applies to, so you can even have different schedules and options for different groups if you want to. You can also customize the reviewers which can either be group owners, a custom list of users that you specify in the selected users, or self-review meaning that the members themselves will choose if they should still be in that group or not. After that selection is done, we also have the settings on what to do once the access review is completed. First one is, do you want to automatically apply the results to the resource, meaning that if the reviewer says that the user shouldn't be in the group anymore, should they automatically be removed? If not, an admin that looks at the access review will decide if they remove the user or not. You also need to specify what happens if there is no answer. The options are remove access, approve access, or take the recommended action by Microsoft and the recommended action is what the system recommends depending on a bunch of factors such as last login and more. You can actually decide if you want to show the recommendation or not to the reviewers and also if you want to require reason on approval or not. Another option is if you want to send an email notification to reviewers and also if you want the system to send reminders if the access review is not completed. This is what an access review looks like from the reviewer perspective. You can see the name, view by, all of the users, as well as the recommended action by Microsoft. When you go to review a person, you can choose between approve, deny, don't know, as well as provide a reason for your choice which may be mandatory depending on the settings that we chose for that access review at creation. Now that we have seen the query, let's go in the lab and create an access review for Office 365 groups. We are now in the lab environment and let me open up the browser which I left exactly where we stopped the last demo because I wanted to show you that the research collaboration dynamic group that we had just created in the demo it actually only took four minutes 
for the membership to start. This is kind of, of a luck thing. Sometimes it might take longer, sometimes it takes less time. But I wanted to use this chance to just spend 30 seconds on this. You can see that we have the membership processing status to complete. Membership was updated at 340. And if we go into members over here, we can see the two members that got automatically added. And because it's a dynamic group, I cannot add a member. That is it for the dynamic group I just wanted to go over. Now that it's actually processed, now let's talk about access reviews. I have returned back to the root of the Azure Active Directory Admin Center. We will go under groups and then under activity I have access reviews. So let me go into access reviews over here. If there were any existing access reviews, it will show them all to me. But right now, since this is a demo tenant, there is not much to see. So let me click on new access review. Let's give it a review name. And we will call it the monthly access review. We can add a description. So let's say that it's monthly guests and members access review. Start date, we'll leave it at today, and then I can choose the frequency, which would be either one time, weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. I will put it at monthly, but again, the actual frequency will depend on your business requirements. But for this example, let's put it at monthly. I can choose how long the people have to actually answer it. You can see that by default it's set it to 14 days, so group owners or whoever I assigned it to, well, let's call them viewers, will have 14 days to actually go and do the access review. I can put it longer, I can put it all the way up to 27 days or as low as one day, which is not really recommended because people cannot usually just drop everything and do it, so try to find a balance where it's done pretty fast but also doesn't make users drop everything at a point where they just don't do it. So let's put it at the, let's put it at the default, or let's put that 10 days over here. And I can also set an ending. So I can, for example, say this will never end, it will go on monthly forever. Or I can say that, okay, we will do this for the next 12 months. So you can see the end date automatically one to 24th of February 2021. Now, if I go a bit lower, you can see the users to review are the members of a group, and then I can choose the scope if it's only guest users or everyone. So, all of the members in the group. Let's put it at everyone, and then I can select the different groups. So, then I can search for global mantics, and I have the global mantics infrared refresh and a system refresh. Let me select those two and you can see I really can manually select them. So depending on how sensitive the group is, you might even have different frequencies for an Office 365 group. So it's not a one size fits all. You can really go and be more dynamic with those access reviews depending on business requirements. I can also then choose my reviewers. So I can say it's either group owners, so the owners review all of the members inside. Selected users, instead of having the group owners, do I want to say, let's say, Alex West will review all of the members in those groups? Or finally, I can say that it's members, so self. So each user will kind of get an email asking them, do you think you should still be part of the global Mantic space system refresh or not? And then they can choose themselves. The most popular option is usually letting the group's owners choose. So I will leave it at that. But again, you have a lot of flexibility depending on your business requirements. Then after that, let's go to the competition settings. And do I want to auto-apply results to a resource? So if a user access is denied, do we want to automatically remove them from the resource after the review is complete or not? Let's put it at enable. 
And then what do we do if the reviewers do not respond? Do we not change anything? Do we remove access, approve access, or simply take the recommendations by Microsoft? Usually, most organizations put it at no change or take recommendation because if not, if you set it at remove access and nobody actually answers that access review, all of the members of the group can be deleted if you have their auto apply on. But really, this can depend on your business requirements. You have multiple options there. I'll put it at no change for this demo. And then under advanced settings, we have do you want to show the recommendation or not? Do you want to require a reason on approval or not? Do you want to email reviewers when an access review starts and admins when a review completes? And do you want to set reminder emails to access reviewers in progress who haven't answered yet? Awesome, I will leave them all at enabled and then let's click on start. It will take a few minutes or a few seconds as you can see here for it to start. Let me just refresh this page here and then we should be able to see our access reviews here. And even if we created them in the same plan, it will actually show them as two separate entries under access reviews. And you can see for both of them, the status is initializing. Once it started, if I go to my Outlook to my email, I will already get an email to actually start that access review. But whatever choice I do today, it will actually wait the 10 days that we put for the duration before it takes any action. So even if I actually deny a user today, it will wait until the end of that review period before actually taking any action. As you can see, it, will, it can really take some time until it kicks off and kind of prepares everything. So we're not going to wait for it to actually happen just because it's a lengthy process to actually go through it. And we have seen the screenshots of what it looks like in the demo. Now that we have seen access reviews, let's go back in the lab environment and look at how to modify Office 365 group settings. We have now seen how to create groups, delete and restore them, and how to manage membership. Now let's take a look at how to update their settings and properties. We can always update the main group settings such as group name, description, privacy, and language of notifications. But we also have some application specific settings in a way, for example for emails. Do you want to let people outside of the organization email the group or not? And do you want to send copies of conversations to group members' inboxes? In Stream, we also have the option on whether you want to allow all members or just owners to contribute videos in Stream. There are other settings at the admin level that we'll cover later in this course. As in this module, we try not to go in the admin centers but some examples include whether the calendar is read only for members or not, if you want to disable the welcome email sent to new users, if you want to auto-subscribe new users or not, and if you want connectors enabled or not. Talking about connectors, you can also configure connectors for Office 365 groups, but we won't cover this topic in this course as all extensibility is covered in the configuring governance and compliance for Microsoft Teams and Office 365 Groups course on Google site. Now that we have seen the theory, let's go to the lab and see how we can configure Office 365 Group settings. We are now in the lab environment, so let me open up the browser where I'm in up of iWeb on the Globalmatics Infinite Refresh page. So let me go inside the three dots here and then I will go into settings and in order to change group settings, I will go into edit group. So what can I change? I can add a group picture, I can change the group name, 
I can change the group description and the privacy settings. So those are really good little things that would impact every single application inside of the Office 365 group. I also have email level settings because I'm in Outlook on the web, so I can change the language for group related notifications. I can decide if I want to let people outside of the organization email the group or not. And I can also decide whether I want to send all group conversation and events to members' inboxes and it tells me that they can stop following this group later if they want to. So I will click on save and this is really how we change the group level settings from a group owner perspective. It does not give us all of the options. As we go into the admin tools later on in the different admin centers and PowerShell, we will have a lot more options on things to change, but those are just the basics. This is it for this small demo on how to configure Office 365 group settings as a group owner without any admin tools. Now, this is really the last demo of this module. We have covered how to manage Office 365 groups as a group owner. Let's go back in the slides, finish this module, and pretty soon we'll be back here in the lab and do all of those same things but using the different admin tools that we have at our disposal. Before finishing up this module, let's review what we have learned. We have presented the basic Office 365 group operations, which covered creating an Office 365 group from scratch, upgrading from an existing SharePoint online site, as well as from a distribution list, how to delete Office 365 groups, and how to restore them if needed. We have then looked at how to manage Office 365 group membership, and how to add, remove, promote, or delete members. We have also seen both membership models, which are assigned membership, and the dynamic membership model, as well as the requirements for dynamic membership. We have also learned how to create access reviews in order to make sure the membership of your groups is always only the members who need access to it. Lastly, we have reviewed how you can update Office 365 group settings as a group owner and what you can update. This is it for this module. In the next module, we'll take a look at the basics of Microsoft Teams administration. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you found it informative.